Let's see what we got. Oh. What we sound like? Since we just on a test show, dog. Shout out that nigga Colorado Rick. That nigga out there standing for the people out there. Not letting the motherfuckers run over them. I want to see if uh, if it's going to get blocked. I want to see if it's going it, to... It looks straight, but it that don't look straight. That's crazy. That shit look crooked as fuck, but it looks straight on the... Oh, man. Miss Kane, where you been at? Okay, I see you. Yeah. Yeah, shout out Miss Kane. What the hell are you? I was just thinking about you the other day. Where the hell Miss Kane been? But no, I want to see, Um, I want to make sure everything is everything for tonight. So I want to see if they're going to ban us for playing this. Yeah, you got to, um, okay, I see you, <laughs> I see you, you got to, uh, you got to, um, you got to turn your notifications on, let me see. You got to train notification on. But yeah, I want to make sure everything, everything for the night. Because we're going to talk tonight. Um, I'm really starting to think this nigga Vlad is really. Love, Chris. I see you, big home. That's love. I see you. Oh, my shit. That's love. Oh, you already know. I see you, John. I'm getting to see a lot of. Man, I've been working so hard, man, and, and that's why I say, man, shout out to everybody who's been donating and showing love. I'm actually about to head to um, Florida when we get done with this test right here. I'm going to Florida to set everything up out there for this no negative news November. We still working. We just got to do it under the radar. So that the motherfuckers can't fuck us up. So shout out to everybody who been donating. Shout out to that nigga Big Mix. Um, early this morning, early, early this morning, coming through on the Cash App showing love. Um, for all of y'all who may have been new, if you go to the Cash App, my Cash App name don't have no e in it. Let me put that on there. Where is it at? There it is. Just use that one. Use that cash app. My cash app name don't got no E in it. And I mean, I got to get me a I got two car mix bottles. One for the house. One for the studio. I'm supposed to be getting one for the car. But I keep forgetting. I got to have my call mate, man. That, you know, that, and y'all, nigga might wonder about that. Let me talk to y'all since we just doing a little test run. The call mate shit, man, it, it's, it's, it's serious for me because, dog, the worst thing next to bad breath you know what I'm saying? To a motherfucker having stank breath is a motherfucker having crusty lips. Like that shit hurt me. When I see somebody with like I'm talking about like to the point where it looked like you can see the ash in between the crevices of the lip. It's like what the fuck? Like damn. 
my shit will start bleeding if I don't, you know what I'm saying? So that's just a pet peeve of mine. Yeah, like that. Shout out to him. Yeah, we're going to, no, nah, I'm going to, um, I, you know, I'm scared to say it on here. Uh, but shout out to Tony said, um, shout out five dollar challenge. Um, no negative news November. We will be in Florida, but you know, go to the um Patreon and you can get you know more information. But I, I've had to put everything on the on the hush hush because shit serious. But we did hit our quota, we got to fifteen hundred um signatures um so we just waiting on the call back from the um from the news team to see what they want to do okay shot that nigga swears i see you big home he said okay we, we yeah we did virginia you know what we doing we did it Shout that nigga big i mean i'm trying we working man and this ain't even like i said we here we just doing a little uh I just want to make sure I want to see if this shit going to get flagged down so I know what to do tonight. But I appreciate all the love. Like I said, this shit, we could not move with, you know what I'm saying, this whole year. We could not have done it without y'all continuously supporting. So I appreciate that. Real talk. So you finally get out and you served two years total? Exactly. You get out, and you're not a rapper. P. Now, you knew P from Quality Control. Exactly. Already from... Okay, Jermaine, touch me up. From before. Exactly. You knew Coach K from Quality Control. Exactly. From before. Exactly. They started telling you you should rap. Before, I even went to jail for like a long time ago. Okay. And, and at the time, I mean, you know, Coach K's been doing it forever. Exactly. This is the this is the dude, you know, who was with Jeezy. This is the dude that was with Gucci, you know, P. I mean, if, if I look at the timeline, you know, Migos was already popping and everything else like that. So, so these are some real, real important dudes that are telling you that you should rap. Exactly. How do you feel about that? I ain't never looked into it like you know, I hear it, but I'm like, I ain't no rapper. What was it about? You know, I mean, because they got people approaching them all the time. What was it about you that made them kind of approach you and tell you to rap? Probably like the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything I do as a rapper now, I'll be doing it if I want to rap. So, you know, like, sounding like lifestyle and like an authentic lifestyle versus most people who rap, they really. Fabricated. Okay. And I, I guess uh, Coach K was saying how Jeezy wasn't a rapper initially either. Exactly. And he got, you know, they convinced him to start rapping and then look what happened. Exactly. Exactly. So, so was your name Lil Baby back then or no? Yeah, my name Bill Lil Baby. Okay. Well, what's the meaning behind that? Jeezy. I was the young nigga out of the crew. You know what I'm saying? Everybody old, old in here. Okay. I really was a baby though. You know what I'm saying? 12, 13, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Or, or 16 niggas, 30, 35, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so they, you know, Coach KMP is telling you, that, you know, you should rap. At what point do you actually start rapping? Just, just, I'm gonna go to the studio and try it and just kept going from there. And what happened initially when you first went to the studio? We just went to the studio. I just made about two little songs. And I posted it on my Instagram and just it went from there. Okay. Now, I, like when I look at you, your newer records, it's like you, you're kind of rapping but kind of singing at the same time. <laughs> so were you kind of doing that in the beginning or is that something you started to develop? I just said, like, it's just... I'm still not all the way full circle yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, still grasping my swag. You know what I'm saying? 
So it would really be like different little beats and make you kind of hum, harmonize a little bit. So that's how that be. Okay. So 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 you started making these songs, you put them up, and then and then it started to started to kind of build. I mean, yeah, you surprised right. that that was happening. I mean, I already had a fan, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a fan base without rapping. You know what I'm saying? So she it, it's a little different when when you have a fan base when you're rapping them, you know? Exactly. You know, it's like like the, the fan base you're talking about is probably like local people that, you know, exactly you fuck with. You know, your neighborhood, people that heard about you in Atlanta. You start rapping, you start getting fans in other countries, and, <laughs> you know, like other states and, and so exactly. and so forth. Like, how did you feel when you started getting that that type of love? Like, I'm so humble. I've been through so much shit in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything be like, you know, like, like the other day I was at one of my shows and like the whole crowd, like, Seeing my son actually like started like smiling on the stage, like laughing, like she kind of that should be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the song started building up, and then how did the relationship with you and P start to develop? I mean, P, I already had a relationship from the start. Like, I've been hanging around P, like the Migos, all the, before I ever even thought about rapping, like studio every day, like I rap, but I just chill. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But then once these songs started coming, what happened next with you and P? Shit. That's his profession. You know what I'm saying? So shit, most definitely, like, <clears throat> he don't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, because he started managing you. Exactly. And he's, he's with you right now. Exactly. So you're managed by P, who's the, the CEO of Quality Control. Exactly. He's the, the, the co-CEO? I don't know the CEO. He, he's CEO. CEO. No, no, yeah. I, I didn't know if it was multiple CEOs. I know he was a CEO. CEO. Okay. So the, the 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 label CEO of the label that's got Migos, Yachty. Wow, that don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like he peed me. You know what I'm saying? Like that, bro. So I don't really got to feel like, man, he got a big, like, I ain't gonna say I'll take it for granted. You know what I'm saying? Because I I know that's big, you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm already used to being with the Migos and the artists and P, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, we like family, so you know. Okay, but you're not actually signed to Quality Control. Exactly, but I'm Quality Control for sure, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but so why But why aren't you signed to the label? If you're, I just you're managed by the, the I just didn't sign to them, we just, probably in the near future, I probably signed to them, we just, Management due to the fact you know, like most time when you sign is about like money, you know what I'm saying? You sign for, for like I can spend my own money, you know what I'm saying? You can just manage me and we can just eat like that. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. So, so you start putting out more and more music, yeah, and uh. The the my dog music video you actually were cutting into menace to a society on it exactly yeah I, I actually I interviewed uh you know Kane from Menace oh, Society okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a dope ass interview uh, what was it about that movie that made you want to actually include the movie into it? all right so I'm gonna see what we do. I think that's enough time to see if it's gonna hit. So we'll see if it hit. If it don't hit, then we good. If it do hit, I'm gonna have to do it the long way. I don't know, dog. I, I don't be wanting to seem like I don't be wanting to seem like no hater or nothing like that. I'm just gonna it, it's a reason why, like. As I told y'all with the rap trap, that is a list of requirements that you have when you're looking at an artist you want to deal with. You do not want no... Just I, What I'm looking at is just how... On some real shit, dog. Back in the day, they used to have media training. 
where they would show you how to handle the media, how to handle certain questions and shit like that. These little niggas, but that's what you want. You want a little nigga who is going to make the mistakes. It's if you had to watch a movie and there was no fucking trouble, then you wouldn't want to watch it. And it's just, my issue is the detachment that people that don't come from this, they just look at it like it's just another, you know what I'm saying? Fuck them. And the world abroad can do that also because most people are not street people. Like, that's something that, as street niggas, we get it fucked up. We think that most motherfuckers is street, when in reality, most people are, they go to school, graduate, go to college, and work for the rest of their life. They don't gamble, they don't, you know what I'm saying, gamble with, you know what I'm saying, trying to make it in the streets. And this is just another outlet. It's become a way for the outsiders to eat. Just go and talk to a little nigga in the hood and he will incriminate himself on camera. I, I saw some niggas, I saw some niggas um, yesterday, I think, and they was damn near fighting over I guess they was going live and talking about some niggas and it was a whole bunch of them and shit like that. And niggas saw that it was more people on the live than normal. So them niggas were damn near fighting over the phone trying to get in front of that bitch. And that really, that is a, a, a microcosm of what it is. And that, and that really, I mean, just like a child would do, a child begging for attention. That that is exact. That's children will do a whole bunch of just throw it off shit. And if you've been around children, you you will see that. Like you know, they one of them see the other one getting attention, and then they they bump in, and they don't have tact, so they'll just bump in and just try to oh look at me. They might even say that shit. You know what I'm saying? They just want attention. And that that is a real that's a that's a big sign of of at least mental immaturity, which is why with the with the bitches, you know, you get a bitch who is just stupid about that internet attention, then that's why you should be unattracted. You shouldn't be attracted to her because that is a especially if you have kids, you've seen that shit. You've seen that shit. Not talking about attention from you because y'all in a relationship, so that may be normal a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But just want attention because it's a camera around and just it's a camera around. I need to do something to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, now when we was kids, my nigga, when we back in my day, my nigga, back in my day, we used to, um, we used to go outside, me and my cousins, we used to go outside and pretend like we was rappers. So, like, it was a song, it was off the soundtrack of Rush Hour. It was a song with Jay-Z, Ja Rule, and a girl named Amelia, some shit like that. And we would go outside and, and rap the verses, you know what I'm saying? Um I guess as a kid, everybody wants to, you know, kind of be a star or some shit like that. Um, and then as you get older, but nowadays, and, and, it's, and it's crazy though, as I think about it, cause it's like, what was holding us back from actually pursuing that shit? Because nowadays it, it really seemed like every one of these kids wants to be a TikToker or like, and, and not because they are this then this is the whole problem this is the issue it's not because you're skilled at something in my day you used to have to be the best skateboarder tony hawk the best basketball player the best you used to have to be able to do something better than other people it's, it's, you can see this with the with 
what's going on now because if a nigga back in the day, uh, Red Man and Method Man, they would tell stories, DMX, you would hear them tell stories about um, going places and have to battle 60 niggas at a show. They would have to battle that many people. Man, a nigga walk down on a nigga nowadays, somebody battling, it's going to be a bad situation. Niggas ain't on no battle. Niggas ain't trying to be better than nobody. And that shit bleeds over into all fucking industries. You don't have to be... Dog, dog, listen to me, my nigga. And I'm, I'm just speaking to you. I'm just speaking to you. Even if you was a big bitch, if you was a big bitch back in the day, you couldn't be out this bitch with all this Lizzo shit, my nigga. You couldn't just be on no shit like that, my nigga. You had to, you nigga, nigga, uh, go to the movie uh, Bap with Holly Berry and that other girl, or or even uh, the Parkers. Go to the Parkers. Go to the Parkers. Come on, man. Go to the Parkers. You can see clear as day. You can see that shit, my nigga. Oh, that, that's love, big homie. That's, I, I'm coming to you. I can't. I can see it over there, but I can't see the name. But whoever I see you on the PayPal, that's love, big homie. Okay, I see. It, I see. It. I'm watching it. So yeah, it was. No, it it. it You couldn't just, you couldn't pity your way. No, it was a nigga name. What was that nigga name? That white man name who did the uh, who did the remixes? Weird Al, the dude named Weird Al. That nigga was doing remixes and all, but that nigga had to be able to to put a song together and all kind of shit. Do the video and all kind of shit. The closest you came to motherfuckers without talent being on on the scene was probably, you know, real world or role rules. That was a that was the beginning of reality TV. But that was a game show like Survivor and shit like that, where you had to do shit. Um, what was the other one? Um, even Jackass, even Jackass. Like I said, I think a lot of those those as we look at it now. Uh, Real world road rules, um, jackass. I think those were the beginning. We couldn't see it then, but that was the beginning of the end. That was the beginning of the end when you just started, you know, praising people because you saw them on TV. It wasn't because they were good at something or no shit like that. You just saw them on TV, and it's like, yeah, that, that's, you know, what I'm saying. But yeah, man, you had to be talented, my nigga. You had to have some talent, man. And 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 we see where we at. Um, I'm seeing shout out to Naeem Edwards. Go over to Naeem Edwards. Shout out to Naeem Edwards also. She just got her big milestone over there. Uh I want her to call in tonight and 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 speak on that. Um hard work, hard work and dedication. Um But she was speaking on the the um, the FN Mecca situation, and when you got AI doing music and shit like that, and that shit is praised and a billion views and all that, that's the reason for that is because the the talent has been pulled from up under motherfuckers. There is no talent. You don't have to be talented to come in this shit. You just need to sound like everybody else. As long as, long as you sound like everybody else, then you good. You good. And and that's a problem. That, that, that wouldn't have been... Now, we had Buster Rhymes, my nigga. We had Buster Rhymes. And, and you know, mystical... You know, it's crazy, dog, when you think about it. I guess we were spoiled back then, just having artists, everybody, nobody wanted to, if you sound like someone else, you would have to do it like a parody. It would have to be a parody like 
we didn't even know what the fuck a parody was back then. You know what I'm saying? Like Weird Al was just we had never seen that shit before. Like what the fuck? He had a he had did a um a remake to fucking uh Michael Jackson's song Beat It and had a song, it was called Eat It. And he was a fat dude in the video. It was like I said, it was creative, my nigga. It was creative, dog. And now just looking at this shit, these little niggas is it, coming up on this damn they they this is why so many of these little niggas are going to these bullshit platforms and instead of them going up that bitch and doing something different, if you just go down and I'll say it because we'll throw this off, but famous animal TV, go there, go to Dirty Glove Bastard, go to um um DJ Small Eyes and just go down the list and it's the same. You wouldn't know that these are different motherfuckers from different states and shit like that. All these motherfuckers are coming the same fucking way. I'm talking about on all the platform, whether they doing music, whether they doing an interview, whether they talk, it's the same shit. Different faces, the same shit. And then they buying views. Lord, man. Yeah, that's what I said, my nigga. That's why I said. So, yeah, I just, like I said, so when I see shit like this, it's like, I don't, it's confused, dog. This, this shit is just so confusing. The nigga asked him about why he ain't signed a deal, and the nigga hit the nigga with the goddamn we family. Like, damn, my nigga, like, so, you you never heard of fucking no limit or cash money. You never heard of, of these places where motherfuckers was family and the shit went awry. Like you never heard of that. You couldn't have heard of it. You, because if you heard of that, you would never say we family because it does the fuck? We're family? Like we talking about business, we talking about money. What family doesn't fall out about money? Nigga, if, if you want to see how real and how tight a family is, let the grandma die or let somebody die in the family who got some land and watch them family members fight over that goddamn property. Yeah, that, that shit. But like I said, and I think that's, that's where a lot of the frustration for me comes from because it's like, dog, What the fuck are you niggas on? It don't matter how old you are. If you're coming into this industry, then you have to be up on game. What, like, what the fuck? You, you coming into the shit and you feeling like it's going to be different for, for you because you did so much better than all the other rappers that ever rapped before. I needed somebody to call too. Big Fast Parker, who this is on the line? Hey man, goddamn, what's going on, my boy? Man, tell me something, man. I'm trying to see what's going on over there, man. I can't, I can't call it, man. You said somebody over there buying views. Oh my god, man! Don't get me started, <laughs> man. <laughs> Man, don't give me a man. That nigga D Rose. Oh man, that nigga D Rose, man. Supremely black podcast on the line. Yeah, you know they, they buy views, man. And, and and like I said, I'm taking this down, but yeah, it, it's serious, dog. These niggas is just, and you know, it's crazy because, like I said, I, I just, I just really on some real shit. I I feel like. No, I guess you only grow up once. So it's like, how in the fuck am I so disconnected to where I just can't understand what these little niggas is doing? Like, I don't see no sense in it. Like, that's why with the whole, um, the Virginia episode, like, just hearing what niggas was doing and, you know, niggas is actually laying shit down and then getting interrogation room and they rubbing their knees and shit. Like, what the fuck? 
Like, how the fuck is you that gangster to where you you will really spank something out there, but as soon as you get in the interrogation room, you magically turn into a bitch. Like, so you didn't know nothing about the street? Like, I don't understand it. Like, what... And and you know what what's crazy that you actually do that 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 outreach stuff. So I guess you would be the perfect person to talk to. Dog, what what do you feel like the disconnect is? Hey, I I think you said something real heavy to even start off with it. It's because you said you grew up one. A lot of these young niggas that we talking about in this predicament, bro, they're never gonna get the chance to grow up. The, you know, the the penal farm is gonna teach them everything they need to know. They're gonna learn all that shit in the penitentiary. Mm. And you know, when you talk, when I talk to these kids and they just go out here, bro, and they really have got their mindset. You know, we'll sit and talk about it, you know, offline, but we'll be like, you know, these kids out here playing Grand Theft Auto, bro, and they real deal have got their mindset, you know, like, you just seen South Central. You remember how yeah, yeah. Ray Ray was out there doing anything for Duke? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Just to try to live up to this reputation, and that's what these young kids doing, bro. So they crash out in the, in the whole thing of I ain't going to go to jail for a long time in prison, but now they drop in the state, in certain states to where they are. Uh, you know, you get you can get charged as a criminal based off of how you respond in court. I mean, as an adult, you feel me? So it's like these wow. kids don't realize that they're going off your actions. So all this, you know, laughing and smiling and shit that you see these niggas talk about. Real talk. And these drill songs, bro, they, they send your ass up the road forever, bro. You 14, 15, you might fuck around and not go to Trial to you, seventeen, and you have no remorse because you still smiling. Mm. Mm. It, you might not even lost your virginity out here, but you got a body. And it. Woo. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, talk to kids, I let them know the real story. Like, you know, my partner went in when he was his daughter was just one. He holding her at his little cousin's funeral before they smacked him with seven, seven months later. He smacked with thirty three years, bro. By the time she get out, yeah. she'll fuck around to his age. Damn. He was in. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they don't realize. Woo. They just do it, like, what the fuck? Like, I'm like, yeah, like, it's, that's real shit, bro. They tip, take more time to live, bro. Tip, tell me this, though, bro, because my, my, my first mind go to, all right, if so if they doing it because they don't know the consequences. So, what, what? What should be the easy fix is to send them to boot camp or send them to a scared straight program. Really, man, it's it's because these 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 older kids and they really not older. You got to think about when we was moving and moving and grew. You right. You right. You right. The kids that they came home from doing ten or fifteen, mm-hmm. and then say shit, and they come home and realize that now we the young kids just running around. You feel me? But it's like. They've been groomed to think that you're not going to catch no heavy penalty. Like, you're going to be straight. You go to, you know, you go, you know, the homeboys and then went to the juvenile system. They come home, chest swole up because they didn't did a year and whooped everybody in there. They come home and they back on the same shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? But that's what it is, bro. They don't think that there's going to be a heavy penalty because I'm young. They ain't going to charge me as no adult. Like, bro, they, they will. They will, bro. If not, they gonna have you on so much surveillance that they don't keep you until you are like twenty one and you actually start to form your mind. Because with men, don't really hit it to twenty five anyway. That's right. You gonna be a lost cause, bro. You, you gonna die in the street. So they gonna keep you until you grown enough to know what mistake you made in fifteen yep. and sixteen, bro. Yep. Ain't no, and they just don't know, bro. They really don't. Like they mama raising them or they come up raising them. They run yep. the house at fourteen, fifteen. Don't let them be like. Six foot, six foot one, six foot two. Ain't nobody, in a, ain't nobody checking. Teacher can't say shit to them. They whooping the coat, so they can't be on no team. So the mm. thing that happen is that they got to go to a damn, you know what I'm saying? They got to go. They got to get locked up. That's the only time they're going to face any discipline. They got displaced anger, bro. They everywhere. Yep. Tell me this, tell me this, bro, like with, 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 like with your program, with Talking to the the boys who who've already been up to Mount Meigs or the Strickland, like the uh, the juvenile facilities, um, what's the difference between them and the and the kids who haven't went yet? What 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 do you notice with those? The kids that haven't went yet want the same story that he that, that he or she got. Damn. Yep. 
Damn. Like, you, know, you know, it's like you coming up and Damn. Uh, like, you ain't tough unless you'd have been to jail or prison. Like, you ain't really getting no street cred unless you didn't get, you didn't win that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't talk about, you didn't win in that interrogation room. Like, you ain't really been through shit. Like, so the girls looking at them like, these the real bad boys, the tough guys. Man. That is really smart and actually get who. He don't even want to do that no more because he ain't even get no, you know what I'm saying? So that'd be the thing. They're eager to prove to the nigga that just came home from Juvie that I could go too. But we just getting older, you know what I'm saying? These kids 13 or 14, you know what I'm saying? That you can't, ain't nothing you can do at that point. But then when you get 15 or 16, your crimes are escalated. You're around some grown men you might be out in the streets with. Real your talk. ain't going to be the same because you're 16 or 17 in the car with them. Real and talk. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't hit somebody and. You, now you're scared and you're nervous. You're talking about, can I call my mama? Woo! Hey, Woo! You grown now. You the youngest in the car, don't mean you're going to get the left of the building. Real talk. <laughs> man. They, might, they yeah. might tell you to take the motherfucker, and then they're going to be yep. like, we got your little homie. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm talking 15 years old, capital murder. There yep. it is. Yep. There it yep. is. Yep. yep. And, and, and like I said, you know, and that's always... What where I'm headed because like I said, talking to talking to a young nigga who not ready to be talked to, that's dangerous. That's extremely dangerous. I would never tell nobody, man, you need to go up on everybody you know and say three inches. Hell no. Nah. Motherfucker need to be ready to be spoken to, but also on the on the other side of it, if they already going for that. I heard some niggas, it was some Alabama rap niggas to my their little top. They were saying that they're little NBA young boy. And I'm like, ooh, woo. These motherfucker might be all the way out the way onto my to where they can't be helped. Like, yeah, yeah yep. they might be all the way throwed the fuck off. Like, these niggas is really trying to be a, 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 a variation between their favorite rapper and their favorite uh, 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 gaming character. Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, Saints Row, whatever the fuck. They trying to be a mix of that. And it's like, you know, I guess that you right. At, at 25, we start thinking better because I was obviously I was retarded, you know, as a child. And one of my biggest issues was thinking I was invincible. Thinking that there was no, you know what I'm saying? Nothing would happen to me because it's me. And I just got lucky. But you know, you catch these niggas who've been in prison their whole life that have never, never had sex with a woman. And they older than you. You know what I'm saying? All they know is that prison life. You know, you would think, hey, if you a young nigga in this field, why don't you look at the other niggas that's in the field like that? Like, you not getting the calls coming home, but then the calls coming home, they not real because as a, a big homie, you trying to let the little homie know, man, this shit ain't nothing, nigga. We, yeah. So it, it's just a whole bunch of fake shit. And, and, and there it is, bro. It's, and, and you know, really what they call the big homies right now that's on the streets. I ain't going to say for every every section of every hood, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the majority of them cats really ain't did shit. The only reason why they the big homies is because they the one that ain't locked up. Woo! Real talk. Real talk. Man. 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 They just putting on right now because who out there? Yep. Who checking, who checking the ones that's supposed to be the big homie? They ain't even got to answer that call from the real big homie. But when them cats real talk. The fucking store has been looking for him and rough him up a little bit, then he started to get some, uh, you know what I'm saying? And now he gets his head right. Oh, okay, you know, so-and-so called and, you know, woo -woo -woo, so we're going to start doing shit this way. Dog. They really, they really boost them up when they call them because you ain't been asking the phone for them because you running from him. Ooh. He probably you ran off on that. And them the young niggas they caught up to you that's trying to go right, and then you thinking everything cool, and then they hey here go bro on the phone. He been calling you uh, for about a month. You been Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Big homies by the phone. Exactly. Ooh. That's it. They need to work and doing some outreach program like I'm doing. That's real. Dog. Right. Dog. Right. Dog. 
that could act like you that nigga that's been calling oh, trying to think about it. Hey, man, man that, don't want to feel on you. The fans don't want to feel on you. Somebody gonna want to feel on you. Real right? talk. <laughs> real talk. Uh, in the real way. And you know what uh, like like what what and what he's saying, this is why we need these type of people talking. That's I'm telling you like that what he's saying that's you would really have to know something to know that's real talk like the niggas who was really on that when you look at the legends the legends is the niggas they legends because they died or they got a sentence that they'll never come from up under you know what i'm saying and really you could be you know what i'm saying that because you or if, if you the nigga who just you was just always so it's kind of like you know um, the water boy don't never, you know, leave the league with no injuries. So he can be the water or the coaches. The coaches can coach for years and years and years. But a running back got an average of four years. So that shit is so important. That is so important. The person that is above you telling you to do something is telling you to do it because they've done it before and they know Every level of it, not telling you to do it because they trying to and niggas will do that. Like and you wouldn't think that that would happen in the street. But all of that politic, that whole shit, that nigga fucked his bitch. So he mad or a nigga trying to get a nigga out the way so he can fuck his bitch. All of that Game of Thrones bullshit, that shit really happens outside, which is another reason why you will have so many questionable situations outside to where. You don't know why this nigga ain't fucking around no more. You don't know what's going on, especially if you just a nigga on the come up. A nigga will put some in your hand and tell you to go do something to a nigga and you will just be a send off. You will just be a pawn in a nigga plan. And the plan can be as small as a nigga don't want nobody there who can tell the story. So it was two niggas left on the street. One real and the other one had some money. The one that had some money was able to break the niggas up. So it's just a whole bunch of it's a whole bunch of shit, and it just don't pan out right. And at, when it really comes down to it, niggas in the street, you shouldn't be. You dog nine times out of the ten, you not gonna get no real nigga in no superior position over you. And that's whether you in a gang, whether you in a dope set. You know what I'm saying? No matter what the fuck you got going on, it's going to be politics in it. And if you ain't in a politics, then you just a nigga who can be wiped off the board. This shit is serious. And it, when you really look at it to what you're getting, once again, that nigga that's been working at McDonald's that whole time, 10 years go by. And that same bitch that laughed at him and all that shit like that, she gonna be knocking on that nigga door. Like, uh, I need you to, uh, could you send me something for the kids and all this shit? Like, everybody gonna wake up, but it's just hard to tell a little nigga that because they just don't believe it at that time. And that is my question. How do you talk to the little nigga that feel like he's invincible? How do you do it? And when I'm saying talk to, I'm talking about what can I say? I'm trying like a cold word. What can I say to a little nigga to make him instantly drop everything that he got going on and get him back on the right track? What can I tell him? Hey, so check this out, man. I did my last little little thing. It was on the south side of uh, south side of Houston, man, in a uh, South Walker neighborhood uh, mm -hmm. out there. In, uh, they call it uh, Jurassic Park on the south side. Number blood and shit. Mm -hmm. so There's a little young cat in there. He got his he got his red rag out his left side of his pocket. So he the class clown. He the cut up. Everybody looking to him. The girls want to talk to him. The dudes want to hang around. Mm -hmm. So he in class. He just popping doing blah 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 blah. I said, man, what would you do if you ran into somebody that was from an opposite set, a crib, a Hoover, you know, BDGD, whatever. I, I know what I'm doing. I said, so how you gonna tell them you a blood with your flag out your left side of your pocket? All his little partners like, ooh, like, yeah, he, and then one dude like, he right. He just be putting on, he really ain't even like that. I, I know my stuff. I said, bro, yo, right, yo, you a blood with your flag out the left side, right? So I'm checking him on what he got going on. Uh -huh. This ain't got nothing going on, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, so tell me, what, what what's the street code? Like, who, who is what? Like, who you enforce? Who the hustlers? Who the shysters? Who the flunkies? 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, uh, I ain't even know another year, so I had to catch his attention to speak his lingo with him. Yes, Lord. Gotta catch him. Yes, Lord. They bold of thinking that they really doing something and then pull their coat there because I ain't never seen no blood with his flag got his left side of his pocket. Man, yeah, and, and you know, once again, with and this is and this is what shit get dangerous is that yeah. you will these niggas and had so many different situations and once again you know <laughs> you know because it because it, you I, I, let's just take it to 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 some military shit it doesn't matter how retarded the people's cause is if they're willing to die about it. Like the uh, they had a the FBI had a siege in Waco, um, and they was like, I think, I think that this happened two times where they had like a siege to where it was a cult, and then the feds tried to uh come up in there, and them folks had a real artillery battle out there, and they died about that shit. And it's like, and it I, I put that same thing down with with anything that's uh with the organizations dog these niggas will be rocking in the whole incorrect way and be ready to die about that incorrect way once you have niggas that say no nah, this is how we doing this you know if you if you look at it that's how a lot of other shit got started and a motherfucker from you know what's real they'll say that that's wrong but because motherfuckers is willing to die about it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, how do you take it, you know, out? I don't see how a little nigga was able to walk around with some niggas who is. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how that. How old was he? Oh, little bro, what number? Like 12, 13, about to get ready to go on. Uh, I think he might be a freshman this year. And you know what? And that's what that was. That's what that was. He he was just trying to, and and that's so sad. He was just trying to, to fit in, and and if you got an evil nigga at the top, he'll see that, and that'll be a clear indication that he don't know what the fuck is going on. Let me take him up under the wing because he don't know what's going on, but he's trying to be with this shit. Let me goddamn put him up under my wing for a couple months, and I'm going to send him out there. Now, I ain't got to do that 30-year sentence. He'll do it and do it willingly. Because you can put it in his head that this how you earn your strike. This how you be real right. Yeah, this how you really do it. These niggas, dog, you know, it's niggas that will, yeah, you know, I'm starting my own thing. Yeah, we doing these niggas around. He ain't doing it the real way. You, dog, these, like I said, that's why this, this shit is, is, is so dangerous. Um, it's because niggas will come up with their own mindsets and their own rules and shit like that. And as long as you got somebody who willing to go about that shit, you can really put some shit down because a lot of times when niggas it's like when you write, you don't feel like you have to argue. But that has not been that's not the standard. If you don't fight about what's right, then motherfuckers feel like they can do it the wrong way. You know, you got these the, the California people. If we if we talking about the gang, then, you know, go back to California. And those guys really came from those streets. So it's like they don't have to scream it at the top of their lungs and all that shit like that. They don't have to correct motherfuckers when they wrong neither. Because even with them, even with them, you know, when they hit 25, they start seeing the, the like, yeah, this shit don't really make, like, if we really getting down to it, our real enemy is a motherfucker in the uniform. And if we really want to be dog, and you know what? On some real shit, dog, that is why when I did a little uh research on Chicago, I think it was the what was the Black Stone Rangers? They went up there with that dude. Uh what's the dude name in Chicago? The Fred Hampton. They went up there with him and stood against them white people. And that shit made me so fucking proud, dog. Because I really felt like that is that is what that's 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 what I want to be a part of. You know what I'm saying? I want to be a part of something that that like we can stand against the true enemy. This shit right here, dog, and you know that right there, 
a nigga that's claiming that he is some set of uh, blood with a flag in his left pocket, I think that really speaks to that is what you would call senseless violence. Because if you don't even know, dog, you you didn't you didn't join because you knew no, you didn't, dog, you really out this bitch and you would die about something that you don't even care enough about to even find out what you supposed to do. You just outside trying to be seen and it come back to the same thing. You know, we all wanted girls and shit like that. We all wanted, you know, we all had to go through that awkwardness of trying to make girls attracted to us and shit like that. But at this point, I'm looking at these little niggas and I'm, dog, when I see them on live, they can't even grow no fucking facial hair. And you listen to, I heard a dude on a little rapper, another rapper from Alabama, and he was on there talking and screaming about what he would do. And as you just listen to him talk, actually, y'all go look at, um, look up Hancho De Niro. That was a dude who got in, the, the Alabama dude who got in a shootout on, on the, um, on, on live and shit like that. Listen to him talk. And what that sounds like is if you've ever been around children, that is what children do right before they, when they tired, when they about to go to sleep, that's what they do. They just start saying a whole bunch of crazy shit. You know, they just, they just, ah, they just doing all that shit. And it's like, that is exactly what I see. And that's what I heard out of them. And if once you realize that, you start listening to the rest of the, they don't know what the fuck they saying. They just trying to say something that's going to grab somebody's attention, but they don't understand what's behind it. And it brings us back to that same fucking point. That same point. You know what? How do we talk to the little ones? Let me say this right here. What? How do you feel about taking taking that little dude who was obviously throw the fuck off, taking him out of Texas and taking him to New Jersey. What do you think at his age, what do you think that would have did for him? See, the thing is, you, you really, like, you, when I looked at that, like, my homeboy, he's a principal over in the entire boys' school in Louisville. The exact is between where he is, uh, ESTG from, the rapper that signed with CMG, mm -hmm. and they, they two communities and they, that whole little beast. So we're working on a program now that we're going to take some, some kids that are pretty much either at risk or trying to do some shit and put them in different environments, maybe take them to like a, a national park or a museum or any damn thing just to take them out of their environments. I think it changes them to be around other kids from different cities that are actually could be facing some of the same trauma and uh, displaced anger to actually show that, hey, bro, we all from different places, but we trying to do something different. Like, we know what we face with, but how do we get past it? Because what you're going to realize is that me sitting around trying to be stupid tough with you, you're not even from my neighborhood, so I don't have anything physically to prove to you. Mm. Everything that I would have to show to you would have to be intellect because I need to learn how you move with you lingo. Because now I'm not in my comfort zone. We are talking. So it's like taking a badass nigga from the hood. Like you're not gonna just pop down at somebody. I'm not coming to where you from right now with my with my young homies and trying to terrorize some shit. Not no. thinking it ain't gonna come with no. Exactly right. It's like you don't know exactly. who these niggas is. Exactly. Long presses around the corner. Like, That's right. You gonna move because you gonna have to use your mind first before you use your physicality. Mm. And so that's why it's always important to remove them from the environment because you're only doing that because one, you know what the girl's like. Two, you know what the boy's scared of. If I take you out of that environment, you're going to have to be a comedian. If you can't Real be a comedian, you stand out. And them young kids, I didn't been, I used to go to the neighboring town with my cousin. Nigga, I fought more out of out of the my city than I did in my city because mm. they see you come around with that little S on your chest, shit, what's up? Mm -hmm. I don't know him, you know your ass. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to have to fight three or four, five of them to get him up off you. Like, if yep. you know one, you know what I'm saying? But back home, you might be able to wolf and get a little boy that you know really just want to walk home from school because his mama told him he better be in there by 315. You know what I'm saying? It's way different when you know you ain't got to be home at a certain time because your mama don't get off the five. There it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, there it is. It's all type of different shit. You just got to throw them curveballs and make them think. 
because you know the truth true of the matter is we just a lot of us due to the anger we just we lack emotional intelligence and you can't move and you just so used to doing and reacting you don't know how to move and and i think that that and then and and there it is i think i think as we just chopped that down i think the only real option at that point after and, and y'all just heard this conversation and how i peace for peace for peace not no we need to give more money to no we giving you what's real out this bitch when we break it all the way down oh you put that child in these fucking government houses and expect for him to be anything more than what grows in this fucking poppy field that doesn't make no fucking sense. Now, I had to hold myself back the other day. There's a video someone sent me of a girl. Some New Orleans girl is, she brought a gun to the bus. Her mama, real nothing ass bitch, real deal to the heel, nothing ass bitch, gets on the IG live and say that she was being bullied. The girl is off the bus with the gun beating on the school bus in real nothing ass bitch in training mode. And the mama come on there and say that's what she was supposed to do. She was being bullied. I, I'm going to keep it real with you. Like when it come down to it, if you put your seed in a poppy field because it's cheaper It's hard for me to blame the seed. I have to blame the farmer. Especially after you have so many examples of what happens when farmers put seeds in different places. You put a seed and you can talk about the anomaly. There's people in the suburbs who are doing. You can do all that. You can do all that. And we can go by the fucking numbers. People in the hood, dog. You bragging about my whole family growed up in the trap. My whole family came from this bitch. And it's like, this this has been an apartment complex for years and years. This ain't never been no home. This is an apartment complex. We came from the goddamn. This is what we have. If you don't want a weed plant, if you don't want a weed, then you need to, it's going to take more effort. It's going to take more resources, but you need to put that seed into a garden to where it can grow into a beautiful rose. Don't plant the motherfucker where you know that they finna steamroll a sidewalk and then be like, uh, he going to be the rose from the, from the concrete. <laughs> yeah. There it is. He going to yeah. be the rose from the Hey man, that's a hell of a day. Hey, you, you man. Yeah, you, that, bro, and, and, yeah. Like yeah. And, and that be our thing is because honestly, you know, ain't none of us perfect. But at the end of the day, it's like we understand what we're faced against. But instead of just crying out for more, fuck it, crying out for more government assistance, instead of you saying let's put these damn phones down and get back to sitting around having. Uh, breakfast together, having dinner together, talking about what the hell going on. You can't blame these people for trying to, they can't raise 20 kids at a time. Real I mean, talk. Was, bro, that's on you. Like, it's on you. I always salute, like you salute Katrina. Man, she got, uh, her kids speaking shit, I don't even know how to even pronounce. Real talk. On live, this ain't no act. This He, he know yep. how to real deal speak this shit. You know yep. what I'm saying? So that, that takes, like I tell my little sister, that takes upon you being a parent, but what you face with, we all know that, but we have to mm. own the white people or the system to say, raise our kids so we cannot do shit. And then when it don't work, hey, you know how the system is? No, that was how your parents were, dog. If you didn't have the mind to think outside of the box and your parents didn't, you're only going to fall victim to what the circumstances that you were continuously put in by whoever raised you. And, 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 and even, and, and like, that is exactly what it is, dog. Pretty much, that shit is getting old. Talking about the fucking system, because at the end of the fucking day, at the end of the day, 
we got enough study to where you can see that's what happens. That's what happens to the children. The problem is you and I'm, I'm, I'm talking directly to the NAB at this point. You had a child because you was trying to keep a relationship or maybe you wasn't, but you brought a child into this world and you wasn't ready to be a farmer. And now you're blaming the, the people who are paid to pick up these fucking weeds and turn them into fucking horse food. And that's your child going to the goddamn state pen, going to the state juvenile department. They're supposed to turn your child into a, a fucking ward of the state. And you go, oh, well, he didn't even do nothing. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? As long as you allowing that government to like, that don't make you that don't that that's not told to you that the same people who are killing the little boys just for being black boys are the same people that's paying your rent, are the same people that's paying for the food in the house. You don't think that's throwed the fuck off. Like, it's going to be hard. And, and this is what the word got to be to the young girls. Dog, what your mama did was not live. And that's the problem. As the New Orleans nothing ass bitch is on live with her whole fucking wig on in the make. This bitch did a whole makeover before she even went live. You still on this bitch trying to find another baby daddy as you talking about your problem child. She's not getting bullied. She's at the school doing the same shit that you did. Being messy. Yeah, girl, she didn't even have no shoes on. She swear he like her. That's what you got her on because you got her on the weave shit. You don't got her on the books. You don't got her on thinking about the past. You got her thinking about Sex, babies, and being a CNA and trying to hold a nigga down. Like you need to, he need to stay with you. Like that's what you teaching them, whether it be through word or it be through action. That's what the fuck you showing is cool. You ain't never said on the social media say, loving my five. You not loving your five. Where you loving your five at? How many times your little boy didn't bust in the room while I was another nigga fucking you? You loving your five. Loving your uh loving loving my two kids. Stop with that bullshit. If you love them, then you would actually put that time in them. And, and it wouldn't be that much of a situation. If you loved them when you had when you were struggling with that one child, you wouldn't have had that second, third, fourth, and fifth. You couldn't even provide without the government assistance. You couldn't provide for the one child. You couldn't get that baby daddy to act right. And you going on because it's about what you want, not what the children need, not what the children want, which is you. That's what they want. And so, like I said, it, it, I, I I go straight to the point. I I I guess I I really feel like dog, and because and I I say it like that because niggas don't get government assistance. Like fuck all the anomaly shit. The government is set up for the black woman to say, yeah, well, if anything go wrong, I can just get government assistance. A nigga got to go out here and, and work because you, you don't have nothing coming from them. So you got that fallback plan, but the fallback is you're going to have to sacrifice the child. You live in the trap. You work all the time because you're trying to get your nails done. You're trying to keep a wig so you can trick another nigga in the house. You not at the, how the fuck are you going to keep that boy at the house? You heard what D-Rose just said. This damn boy, 6'1", 205 pounds. I'm talking about just eating everything out the refrigerator. But he got behavior problems, so he can't even play ball. But he a kid, so he want to go outside and play. You going to get a call on your job that your child has been shot by the police. And he's not going to pull through. That's the call you're going to get at your job as you working and texting and looking on Facebook about another bitch. That's the call you're going to get. And you shouldn't be surprised at that. You got all the signs that he was. You laughed at it when you saw him bring the bandana in the house. Fuck what you fuck all that bullshit. You laughed. You even fucking uh, recorded that shit when he was throwing the setup. You thought that shit was funny. 
you call him by his fucking nickname, not not the little nickname you gave him. Antoine, his wannabe rap name. That's what you call him by. I'm supporting my child. But when he go out like all the rest of them, for, for some reason, you can't see the forest for the trees. He's out there with the rest of the gangsters, but you can't see him as that. Just like that woman over there can't see your son. She can't see her child as a gangster because she know. And it's like, that's why it make me feel like there's something going on to where they're hypnotizing our women. They are hypnotizing them. They doing something because there's no way that it's, it's this much going on like this, but nobody ain't woke up yet. I'm, I'm being for real. I feel like there's something going on to where they have to be getting hypnotized. How in the fuck else could this be happening year after year after year, generation, generation? Dog, everybody is locked up, dog. Man, I'm talking about everybody is locked up. I'm talking about you would have to go to prison to even see niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like Because niggas been gone so long and they steady building more prisons. Nobody don't give a fuck about that. Ain't no most schools. Ain't no, and fuck that fucking, oh, we need to put, nah, they putting money, it wouldn't money, it wouldn't matter what the government, what they putting money into, the private sector is putting money into prisons. These people ain't in the private sector because they just not getting money. These are people who had money for a long time. They have money because they know how to look at the trends. What you can see is that that crime ain't going nowhere. Ask, ask one of your people, um, anywhere you at in the country, ask one of your people that work for the uh work for the uh a CEO or something like that. Ask them why that, that job has so much security. It ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. No matter what happens and how shit go, motherfucker gonna keep coming in that bitch. And the fucked up part is that. Even with the drug issue being so heavy in America, niggas still run that bitch. The ABs and the skinheads got to be extremely fucking violent because they are always the fucking minority. Niggas can be in that bitch beefing and breaking up to different sectors. White folks in that bitch, are hey, you with us? If you ain't with us, we killing you. It's about survival for them. We in that bitch just chilling. Hey, and you, hey, man, and then, like you said, bro, it just takes really just knowing some people that's really going through that shit, knowing what's going on, man. And to that point, what you're saying with the private prison, it's almost down to the science that me and you was cousins, and we invested in that shit. The whole goddamn prison unit is ran by a family. If everybody knows this is a prestigious job to have, mm. it's count, bro. Like down to that science where they could damn near move a goddamn Amazon building job there, employ ten thousand people because they know for a fact the money is getting made off of them having that's right motherfucking prison in the middle of Kentucky that's right or a small ass town in Tennessee we can we can bring bring people in here because we have yep a uh, 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 financial structure that is never yep. going in. like it's to the point where boy, I'm from. They hold niggas in the county now five. They trying to get up to damn near ten years. So you got to be having a hell of a damn charge to even get sent from fucking county because the prison so overflooded. Hold on, hold on. You saying you saying see and that, and I and, and see that that's 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 heavy right there because that's when they was um so and that's that's how a nigga will try to and see that's why it was so big when that, that trafficking went to a you know trafficking that's a violent crime now you can get off with the dope selling the dope and shit like that and you will probably you know what i'm saying still stay and can work some out because of the overpopulation but the prison was for the violent crimes and shit like that and you had to have a, a year and a day before you can go you saying they got it to where you got to have five years before you leave yeah they try to Ooh, get to home and back home and uh in Tennessee, it's like it's some it's some cases. Like I had a cousin that was facing, uh, he was fighting a murder charge. He been in that motherfucker six years in the county. He beat, you know what I'm saying? He beat up a motherfucking guard so they can enhance this shit so he can go to the penitentiary and start getting. It. You know how niggas want to get their time. Yes, it real talk. <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. 
Yep, real yeah, talk. Right? He's trying to finish the county, so he whooped the car and they sent him up the road. That's right. That's the only way you even going to be able to get up out of county because they're trying to hold you five to ten years. You feel me? So they 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 doing that. So they got ready. We got to see what sentence I'm going to have when I can come home and they can give me to the halfway house. That's how they look at it. I'm sitting in the county. You basically like a damn a cow just sitting on the damn farm to waiting to get killed. Yeah, man. And, and that's and that's and that that's that's so that's so that and like I said, it's fucked up that that's our reality. You know, the, the, the white boy go through the system and he just knew and all that shit like that and looking around, don't understand what's going on. But that's really our reality because that's where you're going to see your people at. And because a nigga could be a, a white boy got to do some hell of a shit. White boy beating shot a whole school up and they'll still be talking about probation. You know what I'm saying? Nigga go out there, bitch, and get caught with a roach or just smell like weed. We're going to detain you for a couple of days. There it is. You know what I'm saying? And it's like like the dude, uh, Khalif Browder. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is a real fucking reality. And that's why I'm saying we don't have the, the, the luxury of playing around. When that officer pulled that white boy over, he'll, hey, man, go on here, get to the house. Pull a nigga over and want to run everything just to make sure and even provoke you so that he can take you in. This is what I'm saying. Like everything we do, we have to restructure it. We can't do nothing like it's part of the good times. So, yes, it's going to be hard and you can't just go out this bitch and fuck out of both pants legs. I'm talking to the women. Because you are who they're targeting. Nigga can't, dog, we don't have nothing. Y'all have everything. The choice is yours. They need you to, con and that's why they want to make it comfortable for you, no matter what. Because they need you to bring in more fucking cattle. The reason why they can continue to build anywhere USA is because... As long as we got this system going, what this brings is motherfuckers be kicked back, laid back. If everything go wrong, I can always go to the apartments. I can get me a low income house. I can go over this bitch and, and I ain't got to pay for food, pay $3 for rent. I get income tax for every child. Why in the fuck wouldn't I do it? Ain't nothing on you until that child turned 15, 16, 17, 18, and you got to visit him between a fucking glass. And one day you come to visit when he 30 some years old and you can see that he has knowledge now and he looking at you like this is your fault. This is your fault. You never gave me a chance to win. A child's mind is going to be molded. How the fuck is a child going to um, navigate the, the, the hood? These folks... Fuck how the world look at street niggas. These little boys looking at like this. That's uh, Andre. That's Aaron. That's D Rose. These is these is good people. The world can see us as gangsters, but it, it, this that's my uncle. That's my brother. This shit, you you know, you hear rappers say that back in the day. They used to say that selling dope like it's legal. That's all a motherfucker ever seen. Crackheads coming to the doorstep. That's a normal way of life. That child didn't choose that shit. You can say what you want to say about the suburbs. At least the child has to go and migrate and go over there. Fuck all the nerd shit I talk about. God damn. Putting they got cameras everywhere and all that shit. Man, I give a fuck about no camera. These folks, they, they still seeing that. That's what if just like a child that grows up in a military family, that's what it is. You didn't hey, even get a damn what? child a chance. Hey, you know what's crazy, bro? I was sitting there just thinking about it as you was as you were speaking about that. And it's to the point where, like you said, they just want her to keep reproducing, right? Because it's the reward of making sure everything gets taken care of. But when you think about it and people be, you know, comparing and saying, okay, blah, blah, blah. Bro, it's real deal the same way when we look back on slave uh, movies and hear slave stories. It ain't no different. Take away the man, the reward for the woman, you keep making kids. The only thing they're going to do is as soon as they get of age, yep. you ship them to another plantation. Yep. It ain't changed. Yep. It ain't changed. That's bro. crazy. It's the same That's system. crazy. The same system. So yep. when we look at the system, whether you want to say it's the mom or the daddy, et cetera. If we can't look at this system and say that this shit don't go back to whoever was a slave or however, it's the same system, bro. Break the man down to the Lord, encourage 
encourage the woman to keep producing, and we're going to ship the kids to whatever plantation we want to do. That's exactly how That's it is. That's insane. That's insane. That's what saying. Say to say it, bro. Ain't no different. 400, 500 years later, same system. Same system, bro. It's sick. It's, it's funny that you, like, you laugh at it just to be like, God damn, bro. We have been motherfucking trapped. Real dog, and, and it's and, and 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 but it still make you mad because I know we have the power of of thought. I know we have the power of thought, and and that's that's what make it's like dog. I've seen you know I see Katrina, I see Naeem, I see uh Bianca, I see um uh Aceri. I, I you know we got so many black women that that think I I. So it really, like I said, the shit made me mad because it's like, nah, y'all choosing this shit, man. You choosing this shit, man. It ain't no way that some people, and it's like, because you can't be just willfully blind. Like, you know what the fuck, you see what the fuck these people doing. How the fuck are you down there, bitch, talking about defund the police and fuck the government and shit like that. But on the first, if they don't pay the money, you'll be down there acting a fool. How in the fuck are you depending on your enemy to spare you? The same enemy that's killing your seed. The one thing that you're supposed to care about more than anything, the same enemy that's killing your seed is paying to feed that same seed. You depend on that enemy to feed that seed. What the fuck? But like I said, you know, I wasn't trying to go this deep. Look, I appreciate everybody who came through uh, on the PayPal and the cash. Yeah, this bitch just went way too far. Uh, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't. Shout out to that nigga Black Poe. I see you, big home. Uh, yeah. Man, hell no. No shit, no. I ain't got nothing on no, nothing. You see that nigga in that bitch? Let me get out of here, man. Look at these folks talking that crazy shit, man. Yeah, but D Rose, I appreciate you, man. Uh, as always. Um, like I said, dog, y'all don't y'all don't know the half. Y'all don't know the half. Um, these people over here on this side is real heavy. Um, D Rose is over there on Supremely Black Podcast, and um, it like I said, just a lot of knowledge to give. But you know, as we all know. Um, as long as it's productive and positive, that shit gonna be hidden. But you will definitely on your timeline see Wack 100 on Clubhouse. You'll definitely see Vlad uh, putting out a video about Lil Baby saying that all his shit is real. You're gonna definitely see all that shit front and center, but that shit that you really need. And even listening to, you know, talks about progress and productivity, you shouldn't just be cool with that. If you live in that shit, then you should be trying to pass that to somebody in a safe way. In a safe way, you should be trying to pass that to somebody. Shout out to that nigga Asiatic uh, for what he's doing. Shout out to that nigga Nikki D. Um, I love to see us being progressive, but it, it really does make me mad to see um, motherfuckers still on that retarded shit. We not at that point no more to where we can play. Everybody's in danger. All of us. Um, so I appreciate that D Rose. Let me go get down here. I gotta get down here to Florida. Handle the business. What you got going, D? Yeah, yeah I know. Nah, I appreciate you, bro. Like, you need to do this damn near this Sunday, man. But I'm gonna be dropping a couple of uh, I'm gonna drop an episode tonight, man. I do it. Uh, Supremely you know, Black Podcast. Y'all know where it's at. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love, love. We got it. Every Sunday, huh? Say, bro, just peep this real quick. This what happened when I turned your show on YouTube right now for some reason. I was just watching you in the car. Everything was all good. But check this out, though. I go to anything else, they're going to tap right in. From Brandy and Ray J to Kendrick Lamar. I done did this shit like five times. Why I ain't trying to play the goddamn Ayo Kaseko? Make it make sense. <laughs> Boy, them folk here.